In today's video, I'm going to show you a very cool conductive liquid metal. And it's not going to be mercury like you see here. This switch was removed from a thermostat inside an abandoned military base on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas. I actually removed three of these. The building was being heavily damaged by vandals, and I did not want to leave it installed inside the equipment to have it break and go into the ground, so I kept them and brought them back to the States. Mercury is a very useful metal, but it does have a high level of toxicity. Years ago, many thermometers contained mercury, but because of the toxicity of the mercury, the mercury has been replaced. Many dentists also discontinued using amalgam fillings inside their patients' mouths and replaced those fillings with composite fillings. Now the metal I would like to show you, which is very similar, is called gallium right here. It was discovered in 1875 by a French chemist. It has a melting point of around 85.5 degrees Fahrenheit and a boiling point of 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Any temperatures below 85.5, the metal will be in solid form, and if you held it inside your hand, it would quickly turn into a liquid. It is a non-toxic metal. The element symbol is GA, like you see right here. The metal is used in semiconductors, primarily laser diodes, LEDs, blue and violet ones, as well as solar panels, and it's also used as a highly reflective finish on mirrors. It just so happens that gallium, in combination with other metals to create an alloy, is what is used to replace the mercury in many thermometers. Gallium is not normally found in nature. It is a byproduct of aluminum and zinc production, as well as the dusts of coal. Now on a hardness scale from 1 to 10, 1 being talc and 10 being a diamond, this comes in right around 1.5 on that scale. So it's slightly harder than talc, which is very soft. Though it does conduct, it is not as good of a conductor as lead or mercury is. Gallium is also diamagnetic, which means all the electrons in this element are paired. There's no attraction to a magnetic field. Let's open it up and take a look. All right, I'm going to take this little capsule, which is 99.99% pure gallium. This one's 20 grams. I paid around $10 ship for this. You have to expect to pay between 50 cents a gram and $3 a gram for gallium. All right, right now you can see it sloshing around inside the tube. You can hear it. It's a fairly heavy metal, but nothing like lead or mercury. Let me pop the cap off. See it in there. Let's dump it in. And it actually looks just like mercury. There's more in there, so I'll just leave it. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Now the difference between gallium and mercury you can see the gallium tends to be a little bit clingy to glass. And over here, you can see the mercury is more fluid and it does not cling to the glass. You could place your finger inside, come out, and you can see nothing. Here we go. Actually, my fingerprint was left on the surface of the gallium. It's pretty cool. You can also see inside the tube, there's a film remaining of the gallium. It does the same thing as the glass. So it is a little bit clingy compared to mercury. Now I want to do an experiment. I'm going to take this H4 quartz halogen lamp. It's a dual filament, 100 watt and 90 watt. I'm going to take a sealed lead acid battery, 7 amp hour, and I'm going to power that bulb using the mercury switch. I want to see what the voltage drop is going to be across the mercury switch. And then I'm going to do the same test using the gallium. A larger voltage drop would indicate higher resistance in the metal. Let's start by using the mercury. Let me first measure the voltage of the sealed lead acid battery. And it's around 1285. Let me switch to a current setting over here. Okay, let's pop this out. 
put this to 10 and it's on DC amps let me take the wire going to there remove it let's see how much current this lamp draws that there okay it's on one probe let's take the positive off and connect it to the positive and we're drawing around 2.9 to 3 amps it's a decent load for this battery it's only a, I think it's a 6 or a 7 amp hour battery if I switch to high beam, let's see what that one is here we go that's around 6.5 amps, alright let me put it back to the low beam so it's easier on that battery let's measure the voltage drop across the mercury switch and compare it to the gallium twelve twenty eight twelve thirty five twelve twenty eight twelve thirty five alright so it's not too big of a voltage drop using the mercury switch only around 0.07 volts now I'm going to repeat the test using the gallium take the alligator clips submerge it into the gallium about an eighth of an inch deep keeping them around three sixteenths of an inch apart before I do that, let's just do a quick test. Put that there. Instant. All right. See the tips are clean. Okay, here we go. That's 12:30 and over here is 12:42. So there is a little bit more of a voltage drop, which demonstrates that the mercury has a lower level of resistance and it's more conductive. But the gallium can also be used if the load was not too heavy. And this is what it looks like when you place it in an air-conditioned room for a few minutes. It's now in a solid state. Pretty cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.